but have not encountered even one single intermediate form, of which there should, according to their own calculations, be trillions. Fictitious and deceptive concepts produced by evolutionists, such as primitive life forms, gradual evolution, transition among species, intermediate forms, and missing links have been consigned to the realm of myth by living fossils. Faced with this intermediate form dilemma, Darwin's only explanation was that the fossil record of his time was insufficient. In putting forward his theory, Darwin claimed that living species are evolved from one another, and when the fossil record is examined, millions of intermediate forms will be found, in the hope that these would be discovered in due time. The fact is, however, that today's fossil record is sufficiently rich to completely demolish Darwin's claim. Between Darwin's time and the present day, some 100 million fossils belonging to 250,000 species recorded by scientists have been collected, yet there is not one single intermediate form fossil among them. Today, 99% of the fossils in the Earth's strata have been unearthed and examined. The total absence of any such transitional fossils among them shows that it is logically impossible that these imaginary life forms will suddenly emerge from the remaining 1%. To hope, nonetheless, that intermediate life forms will one day be found is nothing more than evolutionist wishful thinking. Thomas Neville George, a professor of geology at the University of Glasgow, admitted as much a long time ago. There is no need to apologize any longer for the poverty of the fossil record. In some ways it has become almost unmanageably rich and discovery is outpacing integration. The fossil record nevertheless continues to be composed mainly of gaps. Evolutionists constantly attempt to answer the question of how life emerged and developed by resorting to speculation. But were they to interpret fossils going back hundreds of millions of years in an unprejudiced and objective manner, they would easily find the answer to that question. Life and the universe itself are not the work of blind chance. And all things, living or otherwise, were created by Almighty God.
All the fossils unearthed from excavations reveal that in all periods of history, living things were created in a perfect and complete manner with no evolutionary forerunners. Fossils in strata in the Cambrian period, dating back some 600 million years, once again prove that highly complex living species appeared suddenly on Earth without any ancestors. In other words, they were created. The fossil record is now sufficiently rich for us to understand the true origin of life. It shows us that at no time in the past did living things ever undergo any process of transition from the primitive to the more highly developed. On the contrary, each species appeared suddenly on Earth with the same complex structure and features as its counterparts alive today. Evolutionists who have been digging up all the Earth's strata in the hope of finding evidence for their theory for the past 150 years or so have in fact themselves exhumed proof that demonstrates that their theory is false and instead that creation is an indisputable fact. From time to time, newspapers and magazines carry reports with such headlines as 200 million year old mosquito fossil discovered, 30 million year old lizard unearthed. Readers of such reports may think that there is something special about such events, that such fossils are discovered only rarely. But the truth is very different. A large part of the Earth's strata is full of fossilized specimens of life forms that existed millions of years ago. A great many of these have been unearthed and placed under protection in countries' museums. Yet such fossils are constantly being unearthed in excavations today. Hundreds of thousands of fossilized spiders, ants, flies, scorpions, crabs and frogs, all millions of years old, and fossils of a great many other species, some extinct and others not, are stored away in museums. Yet their huge numbers are not reflected in any books or newspapers. Scientific journals, forums, and discussion panels never refer to them. And why not? Because every fossil discovered by itself constitutes a fresh piece of evidence arguing against the theory of evolution. Every fossil specimen found is sufficiently persuasive to destroy the theory to which Darwinists have dedicated their lives. For the same reason, some evolutionists have tried to keep such fossils well concealed. Even today, Evolutionists are still resorting to the same methods of covering up evidence that disproves their theory. The most significant examples of living fossils, once discovered, are quietly hidden away. If all these fossils concealed in museum storage were made available for public examination, the truth would clearly